How the heck are you everybody? I'm Fastidious. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to a super fun video because we have another brand new hero to talk about. Another legendary fighter. This time not a nightmare unit, but an esotericist and that is going to be Helga. She very, very likely may be our next legendary fusion. She is currently the legendary fusion event going on this moment on Forerunner. So let me pull this up right now. You can see this is running from January the 19th. It started three days ago until February the 5th on Forerunner. And this was actually directly communicated to me from our dev contact saying, cover Helga. Uh, she's currently the shard summoning event hero, the legendary fusion hero on Forerunner. Uh, and she's coming to global soon. Not confirmed 100%, I don't wanna mislead anyone, that she will also be a legendary fusion, a legendary shard summoning on global, but it's super possible, if not likely. All the codes already in the game, they already have it on Forerunner, they're trying it out. Without question, she's coming to the game within the next two months, very likely sooner, and she is super cool. She is very unique, very fun, very good, but not broken, at least not from my testing yet. She's just a normal, great hero. She's, she's unique, as I said, she's got a very interesting bony design, uh, and she's really fun. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna break down her kit. I've been playing with her here on test server for about two hours, two hours and 15 minutes now. I've tried her out extensively in the artifact material raid, so we'll have a live play test there. She does incredible damage, it's very fun. I love her animations, her ultimate is so, so cool. Very unique kit, highlighted by her specialized attack speed. I'll tell you right now, she is going to be a triple S tier unit, top, top tier unit when it comes to the sticks boss. She puts out so many hits, I'm talking over 100 hits in 10 seconds, and it's not even hard to do it. Uh, she is incredible. She's really, really fun. I know I'm going on and on, so let's just get into the video. Let's check out Helga, very likely our next legendary fusion in Watcher of Realms. Fastidious. Fastidious. Alrighty, guys, so Helga joins the ranks of Kriya and Nocturne as in heroes that are obsessed with black birds. You know, Nocturne has his ravens, Kriya has her crows, Helga is a member of the crows, and she has her ravens as well. So, wherever Helga soars, her loyal ravens faithfully glide in her wake like an inseparable shadow. This winged queen unfurls her colossal obsidian wings, casting a shadow that blots out the sun. Like a relentless downpour, her razor-sharp feathers descend upon her foes, rendering them asunder. I will say, that's a good description of what her ultimate's gonna look like. She's shooting out like these red feathers. It is very, very cool. All in all, I like her design. It's grown on me since I started playing with her. I really like the way she looks on the battlefield. I'll be honest, though, maybe it's something with the rendering. She looks like a little cheap. I don't know if that's mean to say. I think the wings are super cool, but something with this kind of, whatever this thing that goes down the middle is, it looks costumey. I don't know, maybe I'm being critical. You know I love the designs, so I, I grade them with a, a harsh curve. Anyway, let's talk about the actual kit. She is a magic damage dealer, she is a fighter, and I believe with her entrance into the game, she becomes the fighter that does magic damage with the highest base attack in the entire game. So nearly just eight points away from 5K. Why couldn't they give her that 5K? So she's 4,992, nearly 5,000 base attack for a magic damage dealing fighter is super high. Uh, like you see then like the mid to low 4,000s, typically I'll show you someone like even Falsia who does hybrid damage, right? She's only at 4,564. If we go to Sila 2, I believe she's at about 4,600. Let's find Sila 2 right now. Zeal 2 comes in at 4636. Someone like Valkyra, who you know is only getting better and better as we get more late and endgame stuff, she's got even lower base attack, right? 4270, low 4000s. So this helps her a lot, and the damage is really good. You know, the, the high attack, that reflects in the damage output, because you're gonna see it's pretty darn fun. So her talent, simple. It is literally four words, gains, specialized, attack, speed. And this is very nice because it's the exact same type of specialized attack speed that we already know in the game that Falsia has and that Voroth have, right? She has a base attack interval just like them of 2.6 seconds. And this basically says she's gonna get a greater reduction in her attack interval with every increment of attack speed added. So attack speed does more to make her faster than it does other heroes. So she's in that class all on her own with Falsia and Voroth. This makes her super easy to build quick which is super important when we get to her ultimate and her other skills. So her basic attack, this is a strange thing that they described here. It's just, it's silly, I think. So when you skill it up, it's 80% magic damage to one enemy if the target is not blocked by this hero. So the opposite of Zeela 2, she doesn't want to be the one blocking. Uh, she will get an extra 20% damage twice. It's just two more instances of 20% magic damage. So you can do the math, 80 plus 20 plus 20, 120%. 
pretty darn typical for the basic attack on a legendary fighter, right? But there's this condition, but basically this assures that for almost everything, you will make sure she's not the one blocking. She does have a very unique range. She's got that Zila 2, Apsin, Arrogance range, Aracha, Admiral Claw. It's a very nice range, so it's very easy to make sure she's not the one directly blocking anyone ever. So you will almost always do it that way. If you go to the ultimate, this is where it gets really, really, really good. 1,100 costs. This goes down to 1,000. Rapidly strikes the target with the highest HP and range, dealing 20% damage four times every X seconds. So what is X? What is the damage? We have to get into it. It's actually 25% when you skill her up. You're going to want to skill her up if you get her and you want to use her. The duration is going to go up to 10 seconds, not 7 seconds. And the cost goes down to 1,000, as I said. But the really good thing is what is X? X is going to be whatever her attack interval is it becomes 30% that, so it becomes 70% faster, which becomes shorter as this hero's attack speed increases, right? So it's a direct relationship, right, in proportion. So if you build her with a one second attack interval, during the ultimate, she is launching four hits every 0.3 seconds. It is absolutely nuts. I can't actually see every instance happening, but visually that is what it looks like. It's this nonstop flurry. If we do some math, if we build her at a one second attack interval, which you're gonna see is really easy to do because of her specialized attack speed, it does not take much extra attack to do that, or extra additional attack speed to do that. You can get her at a one second interval, every 0.3 seconds, she will do four attacks. So some math, in 10 seconds, the duration of this ultimate when it's max skilled, there'd be 33 instances of this quadruple attack. So she is going to hit 132 times. The damage is legit every time she does do the normal hit, so the foursome of hits, so the 33 instances, is a 100% damage, so we're talking 3,300% damage, but the actual individual hits are 132, so I know what you're thinking, Sticks boss. Absolute goddess for Stick boss. Unfortunately, I'm not, I don't have access to Immortal Codex here on the test server, but uh, we'll play test that as soon as we can. Maybe some people on Forerunner, once they fuse her, they can, uh, they can check her out, I can ask Ray about it, uh, but she is so, so, so cool. Um, and like I said, from my testing so far, she's just really good. She's not broken. This is not Boreas, right? Uh, so this is a very, very, very cool ultimate. You're going to want it skilled up at the very least to level four. But getting this down to a thousand skill costs, a thousand skill costs might seem like a lot or it seem normal. But keep in mind, she's an esotericist. So if you're running her with Raiden, it's actually 850 costs. If you're running her with Venoma or Cyrus, if you're so lucky to have those guys that I desperately want, 750 costs. She is absolutely popping off. If we go to hero details, unlike someone like Falsia, she does have Rage and Auto. So Falsia doesn't get that because she's attacking so much and cycling so much. She does have 14 Rage and Auto. Combine that with how quick you can build her. Easily you can get her to one second. If you want to go all out like I do with my Falsia, you can get her to 0.7 seconds. I think some people can even get Falsia to 0.6. I can get my Falsia to 0.7. That is rapid. This thing comes up super duper fast, especially with an Esotericist Lord. So good. Like, honestly, it's so good. Quill Storm. During the ultimate, every eight times of damage dealt to the same target inflicts stun and 100% damage. This is a normal-ish stun, a one-second stun. It is fine. Better than the half-second stun we see with, like, Abomination. 100% damage is nice. That's the main thing, because you're probably going to use her for bosses and stuff like that. But if she is dealing with mobs, that's pretty nice, because during the ultimate, every eight times of damage, she's going to do eight damage every 0.6 seconds, right? Uh, if you build her with that one-second attack interval, because she's doing every 0.3 seconds four attacks double it every 0.6 seconds six tenths of a second you're getting that stun out also worth mentioning this damage goes up to 120 percent with skill ups and then finally abyssal echoes her final passive when there's an ally within one tile ahead increases critical damage equal to 10 percent of that ally's critical damage right so this is really cool it actually goes up to 15% if you skill it out. Basically, I tested it. She does have this big range, but they need to be the tile directly in front, not diagonal or anything, right in front. And she will get 15% of whatever that ally directly in front's critical damage is. So in the example I'm going to show you in the Artifact Material Raid, we'll put Salazar in front of her. And let's just say the Salazar has 300% critical damage. I think it's slightly more because uh, he's in an Ageless Wrath set, but if it was 300, right, she would get 15% of that. That'd be 45% more crit damage. That's really good. That's just really good. It's as simple as that. Uh, I think I've probably got you guys sufficiently hyped up for her 
as honestly you should be. I'm really excited to show you guys an artifact from Tier Raid. However, I wanted to leave one surprise. Let me also mention two block, 18 costs, 60 revival time, all that normal stuff. I will say her HP, low. 16k, that is low for a fighter. But I was saying, I do want to have one surprise. I haven't looked at her awakenings yet. I heard from Arcturus, they're pretty darn cool, kind of even cracked. So I thought we could give a little peek, go to awakenings, start with awaken one and see what it's all about. I have not seen these yet. Increases damage dealt to the same target by 1% with each consecutive hit with a maximum increase of 15%. This effect will reset when switching targets. So this makes her super viable potentially for something like Guild Boss because it will be a permanent 15% damage increase. I really like that. It's really good for the way we're going to use her for Artifact Material Raid. She does occasionally switch targets, like when the mobs come from the side, you'll see how we position her. However, she pits so rapidly, it does not take very long for her to get 15 hits out, especially during her ultimate, right? She's getting 15 hits out in less than 1.2 seconds. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, so very, very good stuff. Let's go to the A2. Critical damage plus 15%. That's really nice. That synergizes really well. This is the same A2 as Sila 2 right? Uh, it synergizes really well with the extra critical damage you can get on her from the ally in front of her. So as you're going to see what we're going to do with Salazar, throw this in. Now you can really lean into her attack. She does have that really high base attack for a magic damage dealing fighter. A3, when dealing damage, there is a 20% chance to inflict magic res reduction on the target. This is really cool. I, I'm just reading this right now. Let's see how big it is. 15% solid, pretty good. Same as like Thalon. Uh, this is cool though, because that she's going to be dealing damage all the time. It's going to be the hits are so frequent uh, that this should have very high uptime, especially when she's hitting the same target and she's ulting a lot. It does last three seconds. You should have a very good uptime on this. I think she's going to be really good for guild boss. I will, of course, do a full guide on her. This is more just a full kit breakdown, a deep dive, and then a showcase in Artifact Material Raid. But when I do the full guide, if you guys want to see guild boss, just let me know in the comments. I was already planning on it. So I was thinking we could get an Esotericist team together and uh, really see what she can do, because I think she could be really legit in Guild Boss, like really good. Uh, if she was Nightmare or Infernal, she'd be cracked. Rage Regen attack, so every time she attacks, she's gonna get an additional two points of Rage Regen, that's very good. And this Rage Regen percentage will scale off of this, so that's nice. And finally here, A5, this is what Arcturus told me about. During the ultimate, attack interval reduces by 20%. So Arcturus was wondering, is this like multiplicative off of what already happens, or is this additive? right? So is this, you've got her down, she's at a one second interval, right? Then it becomes 30% the attack interval, so now it's a 0.3 second interval. Now is it 20% of that? Or does the decrease, instead of becoming X being 30% of attack interval, is it now 20%? Or even crazier, is it now 20% less? You just subtract it, so now it's 10%. I don't know. My presumption is it's going to be the 0.3 seconds and then 20% less even from there, right? So let me do some math. So that would make it a 0.24 second interval. Uh, Bates using our one point second interval as this example. That's what I think it is, but yeah, no one's tested it yet. No one has A5 Helga. I guess I could level her up, but then I, then I don't have A0 Helga anymore that I get to play with. But uh, this seems really, really good, potentially really, really busted. But even if it is only that last little bit, uh, you know, getting it down to 30% and then an extra 20% off of that, that is really rapid, right? So now basically instead of being three hits per second on average, let's say with the example, or three instances of the four hits, now it could be four instances of the four hits. I mean, that is a big difference. Uh, so I like those awakenings. Let's get into the artifact material raid and see what she's all about. I'll show you the team I have, I've made up. I think it's a great little example. So I'll show you what I set up. You can see power of dominance is off. We're just going to bring two damage dealers to have a great little one-to-one -one test. Obviously they're not wearing the exact same gear. I'll show you the builds in a second. We've got Helga over here. She's with her esotericist epic Lord Raiden. And then we've got Salazar over here. One of the best single target, best AMR heroes in the whole game. He is with the epic Lord Wrath. Then we're going to bring one tank that's going to be broke here. And we are going to bring one healer that is going to be Vortex. I'll also deploy Wrath just to hit some mobs. He won't hit on the boss just so it can really be these two guys going and Raiden won't even touch the battlefield unfortunately let's show those builds on Helga and Salazar and then we can get into battle so starting with Helga as you can see we got her just a smidge under 80 kbp 65 away she's at 79,935 for the build I did go soulbound arcana she's only going to get two ults off in this example but I thought a lot of people might want to run her in the set it is a great choice for her because especially if you're running her with an esotericist lord she's gonna ult a lot it comes up quick uh it's also some of my better gear but you can see this isn't the greatest gear in the world it's certainly good but I tried not to go like busted broken sets I want to keep it fairly realistic 35.6k hp we've got 16.8 almost 17k attack 
uh, if we go down here, I went for that one second interval and you can see it only took 300 only. I mean, for some people early on, that might seem like a lot, but I promise you later on, this is not. We went for only 316 additional attack speed and that cut off 1.6 seconds. So she went from 2.6, cut off 1.6. She's at an easy 1.0 second interval. If you go all in on attack speed, you get this to like 450 additional. You'll be looking at like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, maybe even lower if you can get crazy attack speed on her. We crit capped her and she has very nice crit damage at 321.5%. She also is going to get a big boost from Salazar because he will be in the tile in front of her and we're going to take advantage. I skilled her up. Obviously, I max skilled her. She is at a zero. I don't like awakening my heroes on the test server, but you can see she's going to get that 15% uh, contribution from her ally in front of her of their critical damage. So she's going to get 15% of Salazar's critical damage added to hers as well. So that's very, very nice. It's a good build, right? Uh, we're really taking advantage of that specialized attack. We're going to have a nice thing going. Now to Salazar, you can see over here, he is A1. Uh, that's the previous guy awakened him, and I don't have another copy yet. So Salazar A1, we're going to get a bit more bleed. I'll just show you guys that right now. You can see we've got an extra chance with his basic attacks, but what really matters is the gear. So I wanted to go another premium set a few less ancient pieces i also wanted him to go pretty fast he's not crit capped but salazar does have the benefit of getting extra crits uh, if we look at the stats here we're taking advantage of his really high base attack that we can go a little harder into crit damage it's also going to help her so there's crit damage at 72 percent we went for some crit rate and attack bonus here you go crit damage with some crit rate attack speed radiogen no attack bonus but again we can take advantage of the fact that he's got such high base attack and then finally attack bonus with attack speed crit damage crit rate the gear's solid but again my gear's not amazing i've been farming non-stop but still it's just like a normal account here on test server i still have to farm up my own gear so here you go, some pretty solid rolls. We went for the Whirlwind set, crit rate, crit damage, attack bonus, and then here, attack bonus, crit rate, attack speed. Final stats, pretty strong, 17.1, so pretty darn comparable actually on the attack. Uh, 1.5 second interval, even though we built a similar amount of attack speed, not exact, I think it was 316 additional here, it's 279 additional, but he doesn't have that specialized attack speed feature. Getting close to a crit cap, but not there at 83 and a half. We will take advantage of some of the guaranteed crit in his kit and then very high crit damage at 358%. So pretty nice. We're gonna get a nice little contribution to our girl. This is gonna come out to, let me just ballpark it in my head. That's gonna come out to about 52.5% additional crit damage going to Helga. For artifact on Salazar, I should have said for uh, Helga already, we're running a Scarlet Hunt. And for some symmetry and a nice comparison, we're also running a max Scarlet Hunt on Helga because obviously she'll be hitting the same boss, the same target that Salazar's putting the bleed out onto. So I think I've caught you guys all up to speed. Let's get into that battle with our little six man team. Only five people will touch the floor and let's see what kind of numbers we can't do. I might have to focus a little bit. That The new placement with the reskin on the boss, I really have to focus in. So we're gonna place Helga here. So she's got that nice range. You can see it in action. And then we're going to place Salazar right in front of her. So one tile in front. So she's going to get that contribution of crit damage. Keep in mind, it's not like the crit damage goes away from Salazar. He maintains his crit damage. She just also gets the benefit of 15% of it. So let's click on. I can two exit for a bit. Uh, it actually doesn't matter since it's a straight line. We're not going to put anyone up higher. Basically, we just need to make sure we get broke here out as soon as we can. And we can trigger her already. And you'll see, the, I'll leave it on 1x. The animation is crazy. It's just nonstop. It's just nonstop. You can see these two on each side, and it just goes and goes and goes for 10 seconds. It is really crazy. Let's trigger Salazar. As soon as Vortex re is ready, we'll put him down. And then we're kind of done. I'll, I'll just 2x it. I'll keep an eye on my ults. We'll put Wrath here facing this way just to deal with these mobs. He's wearing like random gear, uh, and he's wearing a maxed out Soul Drinker or Lunacy Visor just to make sure he can handle the mobs no problem. I want to leave these guys to deal with the boss. So we'll place Wrath just like this. Actually, if I was smart, hopefully it doesn't fail. I should have placed him here uh, so he got heals from Vortex, but I think he'll buy us enough time. And you can see, she actually comes up faster than Salazar, which is kind of crazy, right? Um, Salazar, we don't have four Nightmare units deployed or anything, so he's not at max speed, uh, but he's got a cheaper ult for sure. But she's just hitting so quickly. Her ult comes up so fast, and you could get her way faster than this, as I've said. We trigger her again. We can trigger Broke here to, Broke here to be safe. Wrath is doing a great job, and it's GG. <laughs> she's really good salazar is really good they're a great combination so let's see i mean we know salazar is probably number one or number two in the game for single target in artifact material it's him and valeria let's see how she did pretty darn well 
right? Like I said, she's not Boreas level broken, but she's just freaking good, man. Five million, she handled it like nothing. The animations are awesome. Salazar's still a king at 5.6. I would say her gear's probably a bit better than Salazar, but this is super respectable. I can even show you guys one more thing. This is the reason, uh, you didn't see it, but I had to do another take because I had Olog in there and I was like, I don't even need to bring him. But I just want to demonstrate how much damage she can even do by herself. Let's take Salazar out and let's just put Olog in so you can see something and just see, just well, let's just let her cook, you know? So Olog, here he is. He's not even wearing gear, I don't think. Uh, he's got some left side gear, it doesn't matter. He's literally there just to be a buffer. We might not even need him, but this is how I ran the test. So this is gonna be her single DPSing on the boss. We're obviously not gonna be able to complete it because we don't have support and eventually the guys merge in the corners and come down. But you get a good sense of just how much damage she can do by herself and without Salazar in front of her, giving her some of that crit damage. Cause it's legitimately just really good. She's just really good. <laughs> She's just a really good hero. I can't wait to actually do the full guide and try her out in the guild boss. I hope you guys will be interested in that. So we'll place her down here. No reason to rush down Olog. Let's just make our life easy. Let's place, and we can instantly trigger. Let's get uh, Vortex down. So I don't even know if it's going to help much to put Olog there, but we'll do that just in case a little bit of buffer is a nice thing. I guess whatever tiny bit of crit damage he has, maybe it very well could be zero. But in case he does have any, she could get a bit. So we can leave it right there. Let's see. We'll do the same thing with Wrath, just so she can really get all the DPS out herself. And you know what? We can even just throw this on auto, auto ult, and we'll see. But yeah, I'll just wrap it up there, guys, and we can do this last little damage test. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun. It took it was a ton of work, dude. A lot of bun bunch of new people just got on test server, and I'm so excited for them. I don't know everyone who got on it, but I know some of my friends like Ronaldo, Capper, Mike. Super happy for all of them. But test server is like, it's such a blessing and a curse because it's so fun to get in here and play and test out these fun things and fun ideas you want to do. So down goes Helga. Uh, but it, this is, and now I've been working on this for over three hours with Helga. So it's fun. You know, I've got a great job, but boy, it's uh, it's something. So we'll just end it there because Brokey is just going to keep this going forever because he's so hard to take down. But you can see it was down into the low 50s and I'll show you the damage and it's pretty darn good. So she really, she could easily, if you don't have a salad or something, she easily, I just thought that'd be a great comparison thing for us to do. If there's something else you want to see me do, just let me know. But I thought it'd just be a great example to see her directly compared to someone else in like the exact same situation. You know, they each have the same epic lord and they're the only two people pounding out DPS on that boss. But 4.8, really nice. And she only took down less than half of the HP. She's just a great hero. And I'm really excited. I hope she is. Moonton, if you're listening, stick with it. I'm sure it was the plan that she was going to be the legendary fusion. Make sure she is, because I think she's great, but she's not broken. She's the, the perfect hero for us to all get for free and enjoy and reward the player base. Guys, let me know what you think. If you like my stuff, like it, comment, subscribe. We are almost getting to 10,000 subscribers. I cannot believe that. Five digis, baby. One, two, three, four, five digis. Quintuple digis, if you will. Share it with your mother. I've been Vasidius. I'll see you in the next one. Fast Didius.